tennis elbow and golfer's elbow are two similar conditions causing pain in the elbow, and are medically known as lateral and medial epicondylitis, respectively. This means inflammation of the epicondyles, which are bony protuberances on the distal end of the humerus. The elbow is made up of the humerus articulated with the radius and ulna, and allows for flexion and extension of the forearm. However, there are muscles that attach to the epicondyles that allow for wrist, hand and finger movements, like grasping and twisting, and repetitive use of these muscles is thought to lead to micro tears in the tendons, generating pain. For this reason, the conditions are known as enthesopathies, which means attachment point disease. In fact, more recently, it has been recommended that the conditions be referred to as tendinosis or epicondyl alga rather than epicondylitis, as histologically there is usually granulation tissue and a lack of traditional inflammatory cells, suggesting that degeneration of the tendon may be more prominent than inflammation in the pathogenesis. Motions like using handheld tools or even drawing are associated with the conditions, and the names are slight misnomers anyway, as playing tennis can give you golfer's elbow and vice versa. Overall, the movements causing the conditions do not necessarily need to be sports related. In some cases, they can be triggered by a sudden contraction, possibly from trauma. Elbow pain is the primary symptom in each. Lateral epicondylitis is 7 to 10 times more common and the pain is on the lateral or outer part of the elbow, usually on the dominant hand. It is generally worsened by extension of the wrist or fingers as the muscles responsible for these movements attach to the lateral epicondyle, collectively known as the extensor tendons. In particular, the extensor carpi radialis brevis is commonly affected in lateral epicondylitis. There is typically worsening of the pain with wrist extension against resistance when the elbow is extended, known as Cozen's test. Medial epicondylitis is less common, but features pain on the medial or inner aspect of the elbow. It comes from tendinosis of the flexor and pronator tendons, which originate from the medial epicondyle. In particular, the flexor carpi radialis and the pronator teres are most commonly affected. The pain is usually reproduced when the wrist is flexed and pronated against resistance while the elbow is flexed, called the reverse Cozen's test. Overall, it is usually a gradual onset of pain that progressively gets worse and can persist at night. It also tends to be worsened by use of the forearm, such as grasping, and the pain may also be elicited by palpating several millimetres distal to the epicondyles, which corresponds with the location of the tendons. People may also experience weaker grip strength. The diagnosis is largely clinical, meaning no specific test or imaging is required to make a diagnosis. However, imaging like x-ray may be done to rule out arthritis of the elbow, and MRI or ultrasound can be done to directly visualise the tendon and assess injury, looking for signs such as thickening of the tendon sheath. The vast majority of cases will be self-limiting within three years, and are mostly treated conservatively, initially with rest and icing, as well as over-the-counter analgesia, like paracetamol or ibuprofen, alongside stretching and physiotherapy. There is some evidence that using counter-force straps can reduce symptoms by relieving tension over the affected area, but this is controversial as some patients report an increase in symptoms with their use. In some cases, steroid injections are used in the short term, but these have not been shown to improve long-term relief. Surgery is used in around 10% of cases, mostly in those who have not responded after 6 to 12 months of conservative treatment. In general, it involves debridement or release 
of the extensor carpi radialis brevis tendon at the lateral epicondyle or the common flexor tendon at the medial epicondyle. 